Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. In today's video it's just one story with all the updates. One, two and three. Yes, we've got the final update. So now let's get started with the complete saga. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-Hole and it's by user Cutoff Family Tawei. Am I the A-Hole for forcing my fiancé into cutting off his late wife's family? I, 25 female, am getting married to my fiancé, 29 male, in May. When we first got together, he told me that he was married from 20 to 22 years old to his high school sweetheart. We met when he was 25, but she passed away of sepsis from a botched surgery. He didn't cope well and stayed in contact with her family, namely her father and two sisters, 19 and 24. It was a soft spot for me for a while at the beginning because there was so much history they had that we would not have and it was tough knowing that she was all around him. I never told him and decided to work through it on my own, especially with the fact that he would often spend time with her family during our relationship. Her birthday, their anniversary and the anniversary of her death. He'd spend the day with her family. It was uncomfortable at first knowing the man I loved was reminiscing about the love he had with someone else, but I kept trying to see it from his perspective. And the last couple of years I am completely secure in our relationship and it doesn't bother me much anymore. Well, he proposed this time last year and I was over the moon. I love this man with all my heart but I recently learned that he never told them that we got engaged. Now, I've been trying local coffee shops the past few months rather than my usual run and tried a new one. His late wife's sister worked there and other than being awkward, she did a double take on my engagement ring and looked really unhappy. I didn't mention it and left. My fiancé told me that she kept messaging him on social media about it and I wasn't happy that he kept it a secret. He apologized and was very depleted by it all. He said that he didn't want to hide me, but he didn't want to hurt them either and that both of us were a huge part of his life. I understand that and let him off the hook slightly. I just told him to be upfront with them from now on. That was that. At least, I thought so. A week ago on Sunday, I got a message from the 24-year-old asking if I was happy with myself, that I would never replace his late wife and that if she was still alive, he'd choose her over me every time. She even said that he only kept me around for my money and something to stick his D in. I ignored it, but I can't say that it didn't affect me. When you're in my position, all these points are ones you have to work through and it's not easy to get over those insecurities. It feels like a knock on the teeth when they're used against you. I mentioned it to him and he comforted me and reassured me. He said he'd set boundaries with her and I'd never have to hear from her again. Fine by me. That was until I found my car with floozy and grave robber smeared in red paint. I had saved for this car for a year and it was very expensive. The tires were slashed and the windows cracked. I asked the store a few doors down for their CCTV camera footage of that night, but it was blurry and didn't catch much. It did manage to catch half a license plate though and the color and make of a car. It was his late wife's youngest sister's car. I told him I was filing a police report and he asked me to hold off until he talked to them first. I told him no but I would if they paid for the damages and apologized to my face. He set up the meeting for last night and it didn't go well to say the least. Everyone was shouting. The sisters told me they, yes, both of them, had nothing to be sorry for and that I should leave their family alone, including my fiancé in their family. He told them that it wasn't fair for him to be lonely forever and that he'd hoped they'd be supportive of him finding love again. They told him he was betraying late wife and that he never loved her if he'd marry someone else. They didn't have a problem with him having a new girlfriend because he'd realize she was the only one for him and get tired of me. Now that hadn't happened, they were putting their foot down. The youngest told him to tell me that they were right and that he'd never love anyone like late wife. My fiancé broke down at the table. I picked him up and made us leave. I told them I'd be filing a report and suing for damages and the next time they saw us would be in court. When we got back and calmed down, I gave him an ultimatum. Either he cuts contact or we call off the wedding and go our separate ways. I wasn't going to live my life with this harassment and someday subject my children to their bullying. He said they would never bully a child but I shot him down and said he didn't expect any of this either. 
he called their father, who was fairly chill about it all, but still defended his daughters. They say I shouldn't control him and that I'm horrible for cutting them off. I don't know what to do. I can't live like this, and I don't think I should have to just because we're getting married. Well, Opie, overall, no, I do not think you're the a-hole, but this is still somewhat difficult for me to judge because, personally, I'm not a fan of ultimatums. I do understand nuance, of course. So, given the circumstances of what happened, I understand you giving him the ultimatum. However, that's not what should have happened. He shouldn't have felt the need to hide you, and he should have shut this down. Instead of playing mediator between them and you, he should have stepped up for you. That's it. Now, of course, I can appreciate and understand why he kept in contact with them. They are or were his family for a very long time. But that doesn't give them the right to tell him that he needs to spend the rest of his life single out of respect for his late wife. That is not at all healthy or their business. And what is your judgment? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Caspian4136 says, Not the a-hole. What they did is completely unacceptable and I'm glad you're standing your ground and filing the police report. Look into a restraining order as well, since you must still have all the proof of the messages and such. As for your fiancé, I understand why he kept in touch with them, but he messed up big time by not telling them he's moved on and loves someone else. He's hid you from them, which is stupid as what did he expect? He needs to grow a backbone and put them in their place. Reflection Suite 7222 says, Not the a-hole. I understand why he keeps in touch with them and views them as family, but if my family treated a partner this way, I'd go no contact until they could treat us both with respect. He may be dealing with some guilt about moving on, but if you can work through your hang-ups regarding this, so can he. And New Reddit New says, quote, that I would never replace his late wife and that if she was still alive, he'd choose her every time, end quote. Well, she's not, so they can F off, press charges, sue, and try to get a restraining order. If he doesn't stick to no contact, move on. Definitely not the a-hole. Okay, well, the community agrees that OP is not the a-hole and they're encouraging to keep on pressing charges. I absolutely agree with that. Like the last commenter said, press charges, sue, and try to get a restraining order if needed. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, I've got all the updates for you. So let's not waste any more time and move on with the first of the three updates. Hey everyone, just a mini update to clear some things up before I have a discussion with my fiancé either later today or tomorrow about my ultimatum. I didn't sleep at all yesterday or the night before for obvious reasons. There's a ding on my phone at least once an hour from them saying one thing or another, mainly the 19 year old. And I don't know what they've told people, but I've got a message from one of their uncles and grandparents calling me horrible stuff too. So, obviously, they've been spreading what's happened this week and twisting it. I haven't blocked them because I want to gather as much evidence as possible for the inevitable case. Regardless of any outcome with my fiancé, I will sue and file a criminal case for harassment and vandalism and seek a restraining order. I just haven't had the mental fortitude to do so yet. I'm hoping my fiancé will help me. I haven't spoken to my fiancé since the argument at the table other than to tell him either they go or I do. It was my choice to give him a couple of days to come to terms with everything and I will contact him when I'm ready. From the first message to now, it has been a week. It's a huge wait to contemplate leaving people you've known for 15 years and who you grew up with. He did set hard boundaries with the sister from the coffee shop as I've seen the messages. He said, in paraphrasing, you have no right talking to OP at all. If this is how you're going to behave, she doesn't deserve this and you've gone too far. Why are you being like this? And she responded with more name calling and back and forth. He ended by saying not to message me again and to make sure everyone else does the same. I was happy with that. At this point, only one person in that family had an issue, to my knowledge. So it was silly to have him cut all of them off. It may not be enough for some, but it was enough for me to feel safe and comfortable. For those saying he needs therapy and counseling, he's already getting it. He's been getting it since before we even started dating after an incident at work. I don't know about any of their family though. The first time I had a conversation with any of them was that night. Now, some people are wondering what late wife died of, and it was a botched weight loss surgery where she died of sepsis. People were wondering if he was somehow the reason behind the surgery, hence the family's insane reaction, 
but he was not in the slightest. He likes bigger women and wouldn't pressure something like that onto her, speaking from experience. I also want to clear up the not calling the police about the car thing. It was entirely my idea to not file charges in exchange for a face-to-face -face apology and damage payment. He only wanted me to wait so that he could talk to her to see if she regretted it and then have her father pay the damages. At the time, we thought it was just the 19-year-old that smashed up my car, not both daughters. Neither of us wanted to ruin her life. When I found out it was both of them, it was full steam ahead. Thank you for all your messages and hopefully I'll have a positive update for you tomorrow. Opie's edit. I chose for him to take this space apart. It's not him being indecisive. I said to take time and that I'd reach out so that his decision is thought out. It's for me. I don't want to be chosen only to be three kids down the line and stuck in a resentment-filled marriage. It's not for me. Please understand that. Okay, well, without wasting any time, let's just move on straight to the second update. Well, what a morning I've had. My fiancé came over bright and early this morning, and I've never been so damned tired. You may want to take a seat because this will be long. Sorry in advance. First of all, I want to set the record straight. A lot of people are coming for my fiancé over not cutting them off from the get-go, which I don't think it's fair. He's a very mild-mannered, calm and calculating person, and that's who I always knew he was. Nothing has changed. If he had been Rocky Balboa and flipped the cafe table shouting obscenities, he would not have been the man I fell in love with. He did exactly what I expected him to do and exactly what I was comfortable with. You may be attracted to other things in men and expect other things, and that's awesome, but not me. Anyway, I texted him saying I thought it was time to discuss this, and he was back at home not a half hour later. He'd been staying with a friend the couple of nights we had no contact. We sat on our bed to talk because my back was sore from all the packing, and I wasn't going to force myself to sit at the table. Before we even got to talking, he asked if we could cuddle for a minute. It definitely took some of the weight off and we were able to talk like a couple and not awkward strangers because regardless of some people's beliefs, we do love each other and it took me a very long time to feel confident in that fact. And before anyone calls me a doormat again, no, I was still sure I would stick to my ultimatum. The first thing I asked was if he felt he had enough time to make his decision, and he said he didn't need time. He was very shocked and bewildered at how so much could change in just a week and how everything he knew was so shaking up that he couldn't think and went numb. He apologized that he didn't take a more defensive stand at the cafe and didn't want to make excuses for it. An explanation was that he genuinely didn't expect such a vitriolic response. He hit the engagement because he knew they weren't over late wife's death and would be upset at the news. It wasn't like I would feel upset by them not knowing, which I wasn't really. He's known these girls since before they were in double digits and he would never have thought they were capable of it. It came so far out of left field that he froze. I asked him if there was any possibility that either of them had a thing for him and he looked very confused and disturbed. I said how I've had people tell me it's not uncommon for siblings to do this after loss, and he thought about it. Turns out you were right. He said the 24-year-old, about 8 months after late wife's death, made a move and tried to kiss him. He immediately left and told her mother about it. Mother and father are divorced now, but weren't then. She was a minor at the time and messaged him saying she would be 18 soon, so it wasn't a big deal. Her mother made her see the school counselor and didn't allow her to be alone with him for a while. It was years ago, so he'd forgotten it ever happened. He said he was sure that wasn't the case now because it had been so long, but I'm not so convinced. Not that it matters anymore. He opened up his Facebook and gave it to me to read. 24-year-old had been messaging him, but he ignored it. She ranged from telling him off to crying and saying how betrayed the family was to try to manipulate him against me. He said he was sure that he needed to put them behind him and had been thinking about it on and off since he proposed, but couldn't bring himself to do it. After this week, the fire was lit and he knew what he had to do. It was all abstract until suddenly it became very real. He asked me how I'd been coping and I told him. I felt like I'd done everything right, but somehow things turned out worse than if I'd been the jealous type and stopped their contact at the beginning. 
I tried to be understanding and put in so much effort to be secure in myself and our relationship, only for everything I worked on to be thrown in my face like I was a mistress who was cheating with him. He didn't blink the entire time and just listened. He said he should have been more observant and realized I was struggling with this so that he could help me. But I've always been the strong one so he neglected to and he'll do better. As I've said in a few comments now, his parents had him in their late 40s and are retired. He hates to involve them in negativity, but I was stunned when he said he's been talking to them about this since the first Facebook message. They were very understanding, but his father took a tough love approach. He said the best quote I think I've ever heard. Get your act together before the jig is up. They offered to come stay for a while and help us move. I didn't think that's necessary, but I really appreciate the thought. On the subject of moving, I made it clear that I would not be living in this house any longer than I had to and he completely agreed. His parents offered to find us a place in their state if we wanted to have more of a support network and I'm honestly considering it after all of this. They're only a state away from my own family so we'd be a lot better off. His job is remote and I should be able to find work there easily enough. I've also been in contact with a friend who's a mechanic and they've quoted me between one and two thousand dollars for the damages. But that's an ad cost estimate as a discount. A few people have said to get a real statement and to shop around. The real cost is between four to five thousand dollars and that's just for the noticeable damage. My friend thinks they've done something to the engine so thank god I couldn't drive it anywhere. He thinks I may be entitled to a replacement car altogether. If so, I will be sure to sue for it and that's not going to be cheap. Still, after all the emotional things were discussed, he asked when would I be comfortable enough to go to the police. I made clear he was okay with that or I'd go on my own. He said the surest I've ever seen him that this is what needed to be done and he wasn't going to let them continue. He'd done enough to try and shield them but he wasn't going to let it come at my expense. I'm currently in the bath frothing in bath bombs but we'll be going to the station as soon as I'm done. He's downstairs right now printing out the new quotes from the mechanics and the messages 24 year old sent him over the past couple of days so we can go prepared. People have said that nothing will come of it and you may be right but I have to try. Hoping my local police don't have anything better to do, it's a small town. To finish, I made a point of asking again if he would cut them off or if I had to go. He didn't miss a beat and said that they were no longer going to be a part of his life, even if I decided to leave. He did ask for one last meeting to say goodbye to her parents, to put a close on that part of his life and to explain to the girls that this is not my fault but his decision after seeing how cruel they were capable of being. After that, he would block them on everything and move forward. I was completely fine with that. So there we have it. Writing all this out and being able to talk to people about everything has been both helpful and a good distraction from the dumpster fire that was my life. Everything worked out as well as I could have hoped. We'll see how his meeting with them goes. I'm sure they won't be very happy about it but that's not my problem. Thank you all and I'll update you after they've met up. Alright, Opie and her fiance are on the same page and things are looking promising. So let's now move on to the final update to see how this story ends. So we drove down to the police station with our block of paperwork and had a couple of hours to talk. They were so sweet about everything. As some of you expected, they did say I should have come earlier but they didn't really care because it was only a few days. They said that it often takes people about this amount of time to actually file charges if they weren't an immediate threat or danger. So unless someone was about to throw punches. I handed them everything and it looks like I've got plenty of evidence. They'll be contacting my insurance on my behalf to get the ball rolling so they can come to do a check of the car themselves and they can open a claim with me if I want. They're not filing a claim, they're just notifying about the criminal damages. I filed criminal charges for harassment and vandalism and they'll notify me with more details about my restraining order this week. My fiance told the police that he was planning on meeting with late wife's family and asked if that would contradict my case and they said no. We're not married at the time of filing so legally we're two separate entities in the case or something. So my car is totaled. My mechanic friend, I'm going to call him Tom because I can't keep saying my mechanic friend. So Tom and his partner at the shop did a full check on my car 
and this is the damage they found. Shattered windshield, four slashed tires, two broken windows, paint, obvious, I think. An unknown substance in the engine oil and battered bodywork. They said with this amount of damage, I should just go for a new car, so that's what I'll be doing. If anyone is curious, it was a Volvo. I'd always wanted one and managed to buy one new two years ago. Either they get me a new car, or they'd be set back about $60,000. Either way, I'll be alright. The amount classifies the vandalism as a felony, so they could be looking at jail time too. Now, my fiancé met with the family on Saturday, and Tom sat by the window. I currently live in a one-party state, so as long as my fiancé consents, the recording can be used in my case. While it may not be as drama-filled as some of you may want, it was still pretty stressful to see. They met at the cafe that we had before, and Tom sat a few tables away. Fiancé arrived after their father and before them. They managed to have a calm conversation for once. Fiancé told them how he was feeling, and father-in-law was very understanding, but still trying to minimize. He was saying things like, You know they miss late wife, and they'll come around and just need time to come to terms with you moving on. He kept trying to initiate paying for the damages, but my fiancé wouldn't talk about it until the sisters arrived. It was like butter wouldn't melt with the 24-year-old, but 19-year-old came in like a Tasmanian devil. My fiancé didn't acknowledge anyone until it had all settled down, where then he said this would be the last meeting with all of them, and they'd be going their separate ways. He turned to the girls and said that he would miss who he thought they were, but the way they treated people, especially me, horrified him. He said that this was all him, and they needed to accept that I was not to blame. He even said that it was me who offered the apology in exchange for not filing charges. The 19-year-old then interrupted, asking what charges and saying that no one was going to charge them for barely touching a car. She was a deer in headlights when he asked what they'd done to the engine oil and the two looked at each other. Seems they didn't expect me to find that out. Cue up the groveling. 24-year-old actually tried to touch his hand and told him he had to stop me from pressing charges because this would ruin her and interfere with 19-year-old's college. He said it was too late and the cops should be issuing a warrant soon. It can take a few days. I thought it was an instant thing, but apparently not. This is when their dad got involved again and said for everyone to calm down and fix this like adults. Now he wants his girls to be adults. I see. He asked if fiancé would convince me to drop the charges in exchange for that apology and he'd pay the damages. When my fiancé said it was $60,000, the eyes he gave those two women would shave the hair of a cat. The video wasn't the best, but I swear I could see the color drain from their faces. I may sound awful, but I enjoyed it. Call me what you will. They kept going on about apologizing and that they'd pay, but he said it was just too late and he was done. He'd tried to be civil, but they were the ones that wouldn't let it go. 24-year-old actually asked him to set up a meeting with me so they could get to know me and put it all behind us. He didn't reply and after the silence they piped up again like, So, she won't even meet us? So, she's behind all this because she doesn't want us around. We'll see about that. They went on and on and frankly it was funny more than hurtful. But they did incriminate themselves more and more for my harassment case and the nail in the coffin was when the 19 year old said, If we can do that to a car, imagine what else we could do. That, my friends, is both a confession and a threat of bodily harm. My fiancé said one loud stop before wishing father-in-law well and telling the girls to not come near me. Then he got up and left. That's where the recording ends because we wouldn't be able to use anything afterward anyway. As for moving, we're pretty much all packed up and have a truck coming on Friday. We'll be staying with his parents until we find a place. We're looking at buying this time, but might get an RV in the meantime, so we're not all stepping on each other. I doubt his parents would mind at all. This is the last update for a while, I think. I have a wedding to finish, a venue to change, new invites, etc. And less than two months to do it. Send help! But thank you all for being ears and helping me get through this. If only to distract me from ruminating and digging a huge mental hole. 
Wow, OP, those girls definitely need some help. Now, of course, I'm not saying that you should drop the charges. No, 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 you need to take this to the end. And hopefully they do get that help they need and uh, turn their life around. If not, it's gonna be a mess for them. But that's neither your or your fiancé's problem. So on that note, here's wishing you the best in the upcoming wedding and your future OP. Take care and thank you for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.